Good afternoon, and uh, welcome to Pelican Sports Radio, sponsored by Pelican Sports TV. My name is Dave, the Beat Man Scandaliano, and uh, I'm broadcasting live, I'm guest hosting, well, my man Tommy Christ and TK, and I'm in Las Vegas, Nevada, the sports and gaming capital of the United States of America. And you're listening to this program right here on 910 AM WUBR, CBS Sports Radio, Baton Rouge. And I'm uh, very glad to be here, very glad to have you there on a uh, Tuesday afternoon. Like I said, my man TK, I don't know if he takes off every Tuesday now or what. I'm not sure what his schedule's like. You know, he's a busy man, this Tommy Chrysan guy. I mean, he's, he's pretty busy. I mean, he's a, he's a pitching coach. He, uh, he, he does TV. He does all sorts of stuff. I mean, this guy, I mean, I gotta give him credit, man. I mean, this guy, Tommy Chrysan, he, he's not no sloucher, man. TK's not a sloucher by uh, by any stretch of the imagination, so I'm not sure what he does on Tuesday, but uh, I'm here guest hosting for the future Louisiana Broadcasting Hall of Famer, Tommy Chrysan. So, all right. All right. So, uh, well, we got a lot of stuff to talk about today. It's Tuesday in the sports world, and really, there really shouldn't be much to talk about. On a normal day, there really wouldn't be... Too much to talk about, but, uh, man, I tell you, it's getting interesting now. It's getting interesting. We got all sorts of stuff. First off, Adrian Peterson, we, we got rid of him. The Saints traded him to the Arizona Cardinals. Thank God. <laughs> Thank God. What a, what a horrible decision that was to pick up Adrian Peterson. And I'll be the first guy to admit, I was excited. I was excited about Adrian Peterson being picked up by the Saints, especially because New Orleans played that first game against the Minnesota Vikings. But, man, you can see right from Jump Street, I mean, a guy got like eight, nine yards on the first carry, and that was the end of that. That was the end of that. I mean, you talk about a guy who didn't fit. I mean, this dude was the square peg trying to get in a round hole. I mean, he, he did not fit the scheme of things. Put in the wall and Saints. And, and finally, we did something good. We got rid of him. We got rid of him because let me tell you something. We're in a real competitive division in the uh, NFC. With, with, with 12 games to go, I'm at 2-2. Two and two. Hey, look, the Saints have a shot. I mean, look, anybody who thought the Saints and the wall and Saints were going to do any better than 2-2 two and two, their first four games of the season, I mean, you know, come on. I mean, come on. You're playing the Carolina Panthers. Playing a game in London, New England Patriots on the road against the Minnesota Vikings. I mean, believe me, two and two's all right there. Especially since that was really the Saints preseason. The first four games of the season. That was the Saints preseason because you can't go by what anything you saw in the preseason because none of the starters played. Nobody played. Nobody played for the Saints. There wasn't anybody out there. They didn't have anybody. So the first four weeks of the regular season, that was like the Saints preseason. Then the Saints get the get the bye week. And now they're gonna play the Detroit Lions, an absolute must win game in the Super Bowl on Sunday, and they're gonna do it without Adrian Peterson, because he's gone, brother. Gone pecan. We gotta Six-round draft pick, boy. That ought to tell you right there what the guys were right there. Six-round draft pick. A six-round draft pick. Believe me, this guy wasn't anything to write home about. I'm glad he's gone, man. I'm glad he's gone. We got to clean the character up of the team, man. I know it's hard to do, considering a quarter of the guys in the NFL have been arrested. I've been arrested before, so look, I got no problem with that. Believe me, I love how people go, oh, oh, he's been arrested. Like, the only difference between a guy like me and a guy like you who's never been arrested, you just never got arrested. But don't sit here and try to say you've done, never did anything in your life that didn't deserve to you get arrested. You just didn't get caught. 
I mean, that's the only difference. Oh, he's a felon. Well, man, you know, you were you were committing felonies. You were doing this and that and that. And the other thing, you just didn't get caught. That's the only difference. You, you, the other guy got caught. You didn't. Like that football coach snorting the cocaine for the Miami Dolphins with the stripper. I mean, you got to be kidding me, man. I mean, you know, these guys are dumb. This guy's in a room with a stripper snorting coke, the Miami coach, Dolphins. I'm not sure. What do you want, the head coach? Or he's a position coach. He's got the stripper in there. He's snorting cocaine. I mean, I mean, look, everybody lives a lie, man. Everybody who's out there in the public, they're living this lie. It's just one big lie. I mean, they, they try to come across, I'm clean cut. I'm I'm this, I'm that, I'm that, I'm that other thing. And then the, then the camera goes off, the lights go off, and I mean, these people just turn into absolute pieces of garbage. Like this Harvey Weinstein guy. I mean, look at this piece of garbage. I mean, this guy right here, I mean, I mean, I mean, gee whiz, man, what a, what a clown. What a clown he is. I mean, this is it. I mean, it's unbelievable what this guy got away with. For years and years and years and years and years, nobody ever said nothing. Poor Bill O'Reilly, he got kicked off of Fox News for doing one, one thousandth of what this other guy did, this clown here. I mean, you got to be kidding me. I mean, come on, man. Look, we all have secret lives. I mean, look, everybody, oh, it's the meat man, it's the meat man. You'd be shocked what I do in my off time. It'd blow your mind away. It really would. I'm not going to tell you what I do. I live out here in Las Vegas. Don't worry about what I do. Use your imagination. But don't ever think you know what I do on my private time. You don't. You don't have any clue. You don't have any clue. The difference between me and a lot of people is I'm myself on the radio. I'm not some other person. A lot of times these TV and radio personalities, they become somebody else when they're on the radio. Not the beat man. I'm the same guy no matter what. I don't I don't act any differently. I don't I don't do anything differently. I don't talk any differently. Obviously I got there's words I can't say on the radio and there's things I can't say on the radio, but I mean that's all part of having a job. That's all part of work which is something these NFL players can't figure out. They can't figure out for the life of them that they're at work. They're at work, and what a, what a big stink this is going to be with this deal with Jerry Jones, man. Jerry Jones dropped a hammer. He dropped a hammer down, brother, on the Dallas Cowboys. He said, look, we're done with this nonsense here, man. We're done with this nonsense. Stand up. Stand up. When they play the national anthem, put your hand over your heart. Get it over with, man. Get it over with. We're, 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 we're bleeding money. We're losing fans. We're losing viewers. Nobody wants to watch people kneeling and doing the black power symbol, putting their fists in the air. During the national anthem. Sorry, ain't nobody wants to watch that. Nobody's interested in seeing that. And, and Jerry Jones finally figured it out, man. He finally figured it out. He finally figured it out, man. He said, look. He said, look. That's my man Barry. My man B.B. My man B.B. That's his nickname on the program, B.B. I got to turn down the volume. On the text message thing, my man B.B. says he loves Jerry Jones. And that's right. Jerry Jones did the right thing here, man. Jerry Jones did the right thing. I mean, look, you're at work. You show up for work, and that's it. You show up for work. This is what you do. And when you leave, you do whatever you want. Nah, nah, you got other people saying, look, I don't work for the Dallas Cowboys. I work for the NFL. So do I have to listen to what Jerry Jones tells me, or is it the NFL that's got to make the policy? Well, look, I mean, what, as far as I know, you 
I don't have to. I can get rid of you at any time. There's no, I don't have to keep you on my team. I don't have to pay you. I mean, I can cut you and let somebody else pick you up. Go ahead. Go ahead. Ezekiel Elliott, if he kneels down on the ground and Jerry Jones cuts him, you, ain't nobody going to pick him up. Ain't nobody going to pick him up. Man, Roger Goodell is trying to suspend this guy for six games, man. Roger Goodell is trying to get rid of this guy, man. Roger Goodell is going to go after Ezekiel Elliott just like he went after Tom Brady. And we all saw what happened to Tom Brady's career after the ball had to be the right thing. I mean, he only throws better and more touchdowns now. That thing was a big scam. That whole thing was a scam. The whole thing with Tom Brady and Deflate Gate, that was a scam. And if you think I'm turning over my cell phone with all these pictures of me and my wife and her friends and these threesomes and foursomes and just going to town with all these models and 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 runway girls and and I, it, I, my phone is full of pictures. I'm not giving it to you. I'm not giving my phone to anybody. Are you nuts? You got to be kidding. Man, if that stuff ever leaked out, when I got me, Giselle, her two buddies, we're in the bed, we're just hanging around, and blah, 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 blah. Next thing you know, we got a couple of photos on the phone so I can show the guys in the locker room, and blah, blah, blah. How about I don't give it to you? How about, how about I don't give you my phone? How about, how about that? <laughs> how about that? How about I don't give you my phone? All right, man, look, we got to take a break here. Look, you see, look, when I do my show on Friday... From 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. Central Time Sports Line, where we pick the games against the spread. I don't have to take a break. I mean, I got to take a break, but I'm not really required to take a break. But when I'm doing Pelican Sports Radio, sponsored by Pelican Sports TV, we got to take three breaks. So we're just going to keep talking when we come back. You want to jump in a ball game? Give me a call. 225 928 4910. The phone lines are open. Don back in the studio just told me all the phone lines are open. If some kind of reason you want to jump in a ballgame, 225 928 4910. You're listening to Pelican Sports Radio, sponsored by Pelican Sports TV. My name is Dave, the Meat Man Scandaliano. I'm guest hosting today. For the future Louisiana Broadcasting Hall of Famer, Tommy Chrysan. And we're doing it all right here on 910 AM WUBR. CBS Sports Radio, Baton Rouge. All right, so we made it through the first 20 minutes without getting thrown off the air. <laughs> got 100 minutes to go. Man, I tell you, I'd love to just be able to talk how I want to talk, but I can't. But I can't. I can't. See how that works? See, people don't understand that. I don't have any right to do anything. Right. Right. 
Right, you're doing an investigation. You're not saying, I, I, I mean, I don't have anything on my phone. I can tell you that right now, but, I, you know, you, you might put something on it, <laughs> okay? Ain't nobody stopping you. But, but you know Tom Brady's phone had all sorts of crap on it, pictures of his cock, pictures of his wife's pussy, her titties, her friend's titties, her friend's pussy. I mean, you know this phone was just loaded with stuff. Loaded with stuff. I mean, come on, man. He, he's hanging out with Victoria's Secret models and all of that stuff. All of her friends come over. They're all models. They're all just absolutely fuck monsters. There's like eight of them over there. Tom's the only guy. I mean, come on, man. I mean, come on. I mean, you know. You know. I've seen movies before. Come on. <laughs> I can't vouch that it actually happens, but I can imagine. Believe me. I can imagine. I can imagine. You know, look, I, I look, I, hey, hey, you know, I can imagine it. Bottom line. And I'm sure he filmed a lot of it. Why not? Why not? I mean, you know, as long as you don't lose your phone. Well, right, but he's... Well, you got to put it somewhere. Yeah, but what are you going to pull out a pol? You got two bras sucking your cock, and you're going to pull out a Polaroid to take a photo of it. I mean, you pull out your smartphone. I mean, I, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you're in a tricky spot. You're in a tricky spot. I mean, you know. I mean, you, you got to. You want to record it? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, all right. All right. And uh, welcome back. To Pelican Sports Radio, sponsored by Pelican Sports TV. My name is Dave the Beat Man Scandaliato. I'm coming at to you live from Las Vegas, Nevada. I'm guest hosting today with a future Louisiana Broadcasting Hall of Famer, Tommy Chrysan. And I do know just because I keep saying that over and over and over again doesn't mean it's going to happen. I know that, but they ought to put him in the Hall of Fame. Come on, a guy was picking games at Anthony Gallo's bar 20-something years ago on AM radio, 18 years ago, almost two decades ago. Oh, man, I mean, the guy's been on the radio. That's how I met Christ, on the radio. I met him on the radio. I met him on the radio. But com combined, combined height, he's about six-something. I'm six-something between the two of us. We weigh about 500 pounds. We were meant for radio. I mean, I mean, we got radio bodies, brother. There's no doubt about it. You kind of sit in this chair. You don't really have to look all that good, even though, you know, TK is a good-looking guy. I'll be the first guy to admit. But, you know, you don't have to really have to get all dressed up to do radio, to do it. Last time I did TK's show, I was, I was off, man. You should have saw the outfit I had on. Even Don back in the studio, he's looking at me going, who's that? Like, oh, I'm dressing down today. I'm not going to record the show. I don't care how I look. He's like, Ugh, man, I know you look like that. <laughs> no, I'm in my regular radio outfit today. I'm going to upload the show while I'm sleeping tonight. Since it's going to take about seven hours, since it's a two-hour program. It'll take forever to upload it. But I'm going to upload it. Might as well. Might as well because, uh, hey, you never know who's going to watch it. You never know who's going to watch it. And, of course, I got a few people listening live at uh, PelicanSportsTV.com. Of course, I got, the, I got the Pelican Sports app here on the iPhone. I can't show you the Pelican Sports app on the iPhone uh, because we're on the radio. But if you're watching this on YouTube, I can't do it because I got the phone on in case something happens to the Skype. 
and I got to keep doing a radio show on the phone. It's very complicated here, but I tell you, this Skype is unbelievable. 225-928-4910 if you want to jump in the ball game. 225-928-4910. This Jamel Hill woman over at ESPN, you got to give her credit, man. She got what she was asking for. She was asking for it, and she got it. She got it, and she's still doing it today on Twitter. She has to stop. She has to stop. She doesn't realize what she's doing to herself. She's ruining her career. She's going to destroy her career. She's going to she's going to literally drop off the face of the earth, and nobody's ever going to remember who she is. I mean, this woman's a clown. This is why guys like me don't watch ESPN anymore. Her, her, the the, the few nuggets that they pick up. From having some, I can't really tell you what I what I want to call her. I mean, I can't I can't call her what I want to call her because they probably shut the radio station down. So I got to be real careful here. We'll just call her a clown. Just call her a clown. We'll call her a clown. You know, we we'll just call her a clown, and that way you ain't got to worry about nothing. Everybody can take a nice easy breath and just not worry about it. But I mean, this clown, she don't even know what she's doing. She's telling people to boycott the Dallas Cowboys sponsors because Jerry Jones says if you don't stand for the national anthem, you're not going to play for the Dallas Cowboys. So here's my question for you, Jamil. Since I know you're stupid, okay, you're stupid. I mean, she's stupid. I mean, let's just call her like it is. She's stupid. You know, just because you're on TV don't mean you're smart. You know that, right? I mean, watch the news at night. Watch Fox News. Watch CNN. Watch MSNBC. Believe me, you ain't got to be the sharpest tool in the in the shed to, uh, to get on TV or the radio, man. And So what happens, Jamil? When the Dallas Cowboys are playing Monday Night Football on ESPN, do you want people to boycott the sponsors of that game when it's on ESPN, the station that pays you? I know you're not smart enough to understand this. That's why I'm trying to explain it to you, but... It's very difficult not being able to use the, the language that I would like to use while I'm doing this. But but don't you understand that, that you're getting paid from this network and uh, if people don't support the sponsors, we won't have any sponsors. And therefore, we would have to get rid of you. No. She doesn't understand that. She doesn't get any of this, man. She doesn't get any of this. I mean, why would they ruin ESPN putting this clown? I mean, look, sports is a man's game, man. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know I got a lot of lady listeners out there. I know that. I know that. I know I piss my female listeners off when I say this, but sports is a man's game. It's a man's game. Men. Men. Play sports. Yeah, they got a lot of women athletes. I know. I know. I like watching women's tennis, to be brutally honest with you. I've always said, you know, gymnastics, they stand on this thing, this this two-by-four turned the wrong way, and they do a backflip on it. Now, I would literally kill myself if I tried that. I mean, it's a, I have a better chance of standing in the end zone receiving a kickoff, and taking the ball a hundred yards the other way to the house than I'll ever have of doing a backflip on a two-by-four, turn sideways, land on the thing without falling off and killing myself and breaking my neck. I mean, come on. Look, I, I, I appreciate women athletes. I Look, I, I appreciate it. But it's a guy thing, man. Sports is a guy thing. I'm sorry. And you got this woman, 
Jamil Hill, whatever her name is, I mean, I've never even met a human being with that name. Where did you get that name? When they gave your mom the thing to sign in a hospital, did she not know how to spell and whatever she was trying to spell? I mean, is that how you got that name? I mean, I'm 47 years old. I've never seen anybody with that name. Like they gave your mom the clipboard to fill in what your name is and you She's like, oh, man, uh, how do you spell Jenny? Dude, boy, and she came out with that. That would be my guess. I don't know. I don't know. That, that, that would be my guess. That would, that would be, that would be my guess. I, 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 I don't, but man, look, I'm glad ESPN took her off. Now, the question is, are they doing it without pay? Are they doing it without pay or is she getting a two week paid vacation? That's the other question. She's getting a two-week paid vacation. That's nice. You got to like that. Nice two weeks off, two weeks off, paid vacation. Has nothing to do. Sits on her Twitter account. She's still on Twitter bashing everybody. I'm telling you, she's asking for it. That Sports Center 6 show, that's the worst show on television. By far. By far, it's the worst show on television. I'd rather watch Say Yes to the Dress. I'd rather see my full weddings. I'd, I'd, I'd rather watch anything. Anything. I'd rather watch Farik Zakaria GPS on CNN on Sunday morning before I watch Sports Center 6. That's how bad a show it is. That's how bad of a program that is. And ESPN is jamming this thing down her throat. And I'm not watching. Look, if it was up to me. One of these days, you're going to get a cable bill, and you're going to get to pick and choose what you want. And ESPN is going to be in for a big shock, man, because I don't think people realize it, but the most expensive thing that you pay for on your cable bill is ESPN. ESPN, that's the most expensive thing on your bill, because all the live sports and the contracts they have with the NBA and Major League Baseball and this and that and that and the other thing. And the money's got to come from somewhere. And it comes on your cable bill. But one of these days, man, you're going to get to hand pick what you want on your cable bill. And, man, when that day happens, ESPN's in for a rude awakening. I'd never get ESPN. I'd get CNN, MSNBC, Fox News. I'd get Animal Planet. What the hell else would the beat man? Yeah, I don't know. There's four or five other channels I get. That'd be it, man. That'd be it. I don't need ESPN. I don't need that. I don't need to see the highlights of the game. Believe me, I, I don't need ESPN. What do I need ESPN for? For what? What do I need ESPN for? Nothing. Nothing. ESPN, I mean, great. In its time, in its day, you got it. You needed a score, it was scrolling on the bottom of the screen, it was great. It was great, but now I don't need ESPN. What the heck I need that for? I get my own score on my phone, on my app, on my computer. I don't need ESPN anymore. So, man, 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 I, I hope Trump puts his foot down in this woman's throat, man, and just twists it. And just twisted, man. She's going to lose this fight. She's going to lose this fight. And she's going to cry. You know what, man? I ain't going to bring it up on the show. But she's going to cry it. She's going to cry it. She's going to cry it. She's got nobody to blame but herself. She had a platform. ESPN gave her her own show. And she couldn't help herself, man. She, she believes in all these fake narratives that happen in this country. Yeah, some of them are true. Some of them are true. A lot of them aren't. Hands up, don't shoot. Michael Brown shot in the back. The guy was shot in the front, man. Okay? He had no bullet holes in the back of him. Every time they bring up Michael Brown, that pretty much shuts the argument down with me. When you bring up a lie, a 100% pure lie, that the guy got shot in the back, they got all the shots are in the front, man. Every one of them. Every one of them. As soon as you bring his name up, you know it's all B.S. Dang. We got to take another break. We got to take another break. And then in a little while, we got to take another one. That's how this works. Unfortunately, 
That's how this works. My name's Dave, the Meat Man Scandaliato. I do a show here on Pelican Sports Radio every Friday, 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. Central Time. It's called Sports Line. And today I'm guest hosting for the future Louisiana Broadcasting Hall of Famer Thomas Chrysan, who does Pelican Sports Radio, sponsored by Pelican Sports TV. TK is off today. I'm guest hosting a show for him. Tommy Chrysan will be back behind the microphone tomorrow. And uh, we'll be back after a quick commercial break. You're listening to Pelican Sports Radio, sponsored by Pelican Sports TV. And we're doing it all right here on 910 AM WUPR. CBS Sports Radio, Baton Rouge. Uh, well, I, yeah, well, the whole thing, it aggravates the crap out of me. I mean, the whole thing's aggravating. I mean, it, you know, and it's always, it's black against white. Black against white. It's all black players kneeling. No white players kneeling. Okay, you know, it, 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 everything has got to be turned into some kind of racial issue. You know, why do we have to make football? But football is the one thing that there was no race involved in it. You know, we all got together. We all talked about football. We'd sit in a sports book or go to the game or this or that. But now we can't even do that together now because, you know, you know, boom, boom, boom. And ah, it's sad. 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 They screwed up football. They screw up anything. They can screw up anything. Man, can you imagine if these guys were allowed to do this in the NBA? I mean, it would be absolute pandemonium. They can't do it in the NBA. It's an agreement. You better stand there and shut up. Stand there and shut up. Simple as that. Stand there. Keep your fucking mouth shut. Okay? You're making 20-something fucking million dollars a year. You ought to be making about five, Okay? But because of the TV ratings and all of this other crap, you get the players get 50% of the money. So if the players get 50% of the money and it's $500 million and the players get $250 million of it and there's 12 guys on the team, hey, everybody gets a raise. That's how it works. Good. Good for them. Good for them. But they're too stupid to realize that. <laughs> they're too stupid. They're too stupid. It's sad. But, oh well, I guess I've never been black before, so I don't know what it's like to be black. But, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, you know, I got, I got pulled over the other day by a cop, you know, because the, the license plate, the registration tags are kind of all, the stickers are all over the back of the plate. They don't have one covering the other one up. So the cop told, pulled me over and said, you know, you, you can't have that. I said, no problem. He didn't write me a ticket or nothing like that. But he pulled me over. Don't sit here and say you don't get pulled over. I got pulled over. I'm white as can be. I mean, I'm the whitest guy that I know, man. I can't, you know, I mean, you don't get much whiter than I am. He pulled me over with no problem. Didn't think twice about it. He pulled me over. It's not a, you know, it's not a white and black thing, man. It isn't. And uh, welcome back to Pelican Sports Radio, sponsored by Pelican Sports TV. My name is Dave, the Meat Man Scandaliato. I'm guest hosting today. 
But yes, I'm going to say it again. The future Louisiana Broadcasting Hall of Famer, Tommy Chrysan. I'm glad to be here. Glad to have you there. TK, he'll be back behind a microphone manana. That's tomorrow in Spanish. I went to Brother Martin. I took two years of Spanish in high school. And I learned about ten words. One of my biggest regrets of all time is not learning how to speak Spanish. Oh, well. I, I don't, that don't go down as a mistake by the meat man. I should have learned how to speak it. Especially living out here in Las Vegas. There's nothing worse than having a bunch of people talking in front of you. You don't know what the heck they're saying. <laughs> I can tell you that right now. There's nothing worse than that. Having people talking right in front of you and you don't understand anything that they're saying. But that's all right. I don't care. I don't care. I, what do I care about all that? What do I care about all that? All right, we're here to talk sports. We're here to talk sports. And with the win on Saturday, the LSU Tigers now control their own destiny as far as making it to the SEC championship game. Now, I'm going to give everybody a few seconds to laugh. Go ahead and laugh. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but, I mean, hey. Why not? Why not? I mean, look, nobody goes into the swamp and beats the Florida Gators. Nobody. There ain't nobody goes down there and beats the Florida Gators. I mean, look, that don't happen too often. LSU went down and took care of business on Saturday. They went down and took care of business. And I got to give the Sharps and the wise guys credit. They were right, man. They were right. They bet the piss out of that thing, man. They bet that thing down from six points all the way down to a picket. A lot of places actually at LSU go off minus one and a half, two points. So, I mean, they steam the crap out of that line. I mean, they, they bet that like they knew the outcome of the game. Now, I got a little hairy at the end. I mean, the guy missed the extra point. Who knows what would have happened if it went to overtime or this or that or that or anything. But the bottom line is LSU won a game. They won a game. Now they control their own destiny. But now what about this week? What about this week? The Tigers, this is a very winnable game for LSU. I mean, let's be brutally honest here. This isn't some kind of game that the LSU Tigers can't win. Auburn is 5-1. and one. LSU is 4-2. and two. Auburn's only loss, Clemson's Tigers. Clemson beat them 14-6. They held the Clemson Tigers to 14 points. But more importantly, the Clemson Tigers... They held the Auburn Tigers to just six points. Six points. And that game was at Clemson. Clemson was a six-point favorite. The total was 54 and a half. Clemson covered the spread. Never went any, no chance at ever getting a over the total. I mean, if it would have went to overtime, maybe 14-14. Had Auburn scored late, went for two, tied it up. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, it, 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 they would have still had a long way to go. Still would have had to score another 26 and a half points. So, I mean, you certainly wouldn't have been out of the woods. But nevertheless, you know what I'm talking about. You know, you know what I'm talking about. I mean, when the total's 54 and a half, and the final score of the game is 14-6. You were on the right side if you had under the total. You were on the right side. But uh, since then, Auburn has scored 24, 51, 49, and 44. 
They got the offense working, especially the last three games where they've scored 144 points. That's 48 points a game. How you like that? Beat man's pretty good with the math, huh? That's pretty good. I just did that right off the top of my head. Now, here's the one thing LSU's got going for them on Saturday. And that is LSU beat Auburn at home in 2007, 30 to 24. In 2009, LSU won 31 to 10. 2011, LSU beat Auburn at home 45 to 10. 2013, it was the LSU Tigers 35, Auburn 21. That game in Baton Rouge. And the last time they played in Tiger Stadium, the LSU Tigers beat the Auburn Tigers 45 to 21. Auburn doesn't win at LSU. Hello? Hello? Five years in a row. Five tries in a row over the last ten years. Home and away, home and away, home and away, home and away. LSU owns the Auburn Tigers at home. That's the bottom line. That's the bottom line. LSU owns Auburn in LSU. Now, the reason I'm taking LSU in this game on Saturday is because just like what I saw out of the Tigers this past Saturday, because this was like a revenge game for the LSU Tigers this past Saturday against Florida, the way the game ended last year. And you got the same situation here. This was the game that Les Miles got fired over. This was a game that cost Les Miles his job as head coach LSU. LSU won the game, but they said they didn't get the playoff. They said that the time expired on the clock. LSU's going to want to win this game. LSU's not going to roll over for the Auburn Tigers in Baton Rouge, a place where Auburn never wins. You can forget about that. You can forget about that. All right, look, I got to take one more commercial break before the top of the hour. So this is a good time to do it right here. When I come back, I'm going to give you the point spread, the opening line on the LSU Auburn game. I'm going to look for a total. And uh, once again, I'm going to keep telling you why I like LSU this week. I think the Tigers are in a good spot. I think they're in a good spot right here. Last year, at Auburn, they were laying three and a half. Now at home, they get six and a half. I don't know, man. I don't know. We'll talk a little bit more about this in the final ten minutes of our number one of Pelican Sports Radio, sponsored by Pelican Sports TV. Don't touch that dial, Cap. My name is Dave, the Meat Man Scandaliano. I'm guest hosting today for the future Louisiana Broadcasting Hall of Famer, Tommy Chrysan. And we're doing it all right here on 910 AM WUBR, CBS Sports Radio, Baton Rouge. Christ had made me laugh the other day. He, he said they uh you gotta when you know you gotta wait till the end of the LSU game. They gotta put some makeup on Buddy Sanji and then they start the TV show, implying that he doesn't need any makeup. I, I thought that was who does the makeup for him? Who comes in there and does that? Really? Oh, really? 
don't know. I thought somebody put a little makeup on him, maybe. No. <laughs> TV, no. All right. Huh? Ah. Right. All right. Well, I just laughed when I laughed when he said that. That's all. I, I just I thought that was kind of funny. No, oh, really? Wow. <laughs> wow. All right. Well, you got to you got to send it to to the uh, the five hundred four number. The five hundred four. The one that the one that we're on right now, because the other phone doesn't get you know it's just a the little crap flip phone. All right, and welcome back to Pelican Sports Radio, sponsored by Pelican Sports TV. My name is Dave, the Meat Man Skin Aliado. I'm guest hosting today. Well, Tommy Christ and TK will be back behind the microphone tomorrow on a Wednesday. Don't forget, I do a show every Friday right here on 9, 10 a.m. WUBR CBS Sports Radio, Pat Rouge. It's called Sports Line. We pick games against the spread. That's what we do, Cap. We pick games against the spread. And last week, the meat man, no good, man. Oh, four and one. Can you believe that? I got this beautiful 21 and 11 record. It's an absolute thing of beauty. And I screw it up. And I tell you, I had some tough losses. I, I told everybody to take Florida. I said take Florida. And on the, 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 the day of the game, if you waited until the day of the game, Florida covered the spread. Because they were getting one and a half, two points. But I gave it out two days earlier when Florida was the favorite. So I was a loser for the beat man. And I come with the Buffalo Bills. You know, they uh, boom, ba, boom, ba. They go for it on fourth down. And they give Cincinnati the cheap field goal. And the Bengals win by four points. I'm getting Buffalo plus three. Then I got... San Jose State, the Spartans, they're hanging around, hanging around, hanging around. They get a 51-yard field goal to go down 14 points with six minutes left in the game. I'm getting 17. They got two timeouts. Instead of kicking it deep, these bozos kick an onside kick. Fresno State gets the ball, and their guy makes a 50-yard field goal. And I wind up with a push. That was my push. That was my only non-loss for the program. Now, the record's still good, and I got some games going this week that I literally love more than life itself. And you can love them with me, Cap. Friday, 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. Central Time on 9, 10 a.m. W-U-B-R. CBS Sports Radio, Bat Rouge. All right, we're talking about the LSU Tigers, Auburn Tigers game. I can tell you right now, man, I like LSU here. I like the LSU Tigers in this spot. LSU, the line on this game, open Auburn a six-point favorite. And the total 46. Right now, Auburn is a six and a half point favorite. And the total on the game is 44 and a half. So we got a little half a point movement on Auburn. And we got a point and a half movement on under the total. Mississippi State beat the ever-living crap 
out of LSU. Auburn beat the absolute crap out of Mississippi State. It only makes sense if the LSU Tigers are going to beat the Auburn Tigers on Saturday. That's the only logical explanation you could come up with. If you stop and think about it, if you stop and think about it, if you stop and think about the craziness of sports, Mississippi State beats LSU. I mean, they beat them into the ground, 37-7. The Auburn Tigers... They absolutely crushed Mississippi State 49 to 10. Now Auburn's coming in the Tiger Stadium. They've lost at least five in a row there that I know of. It could be more. Probably is more. And the Auburn Tigers are expected to go in the LSU and win the game by more than a touchdown. It's a monster revenge game. For LSU, their coach got fired. Les Miles, the winningest coach in the history of LSU football, got canned after the controversial loss to the Auburn Tigers last year where LSU scores on the last play of the game. They said it didn't count. Didn't count. Time ran off the clock. I think that's what happened. I'm pretty sure that's what happened. Believe me, LSU wants to win this game, man. The Tigers, believe me, the Tigers are pissed off. There was two games on the schedule that were big monster revenge games for LSU. Florida last week and Auburn, the Auburn Tigers this week. That's the, that's the, that's the, that's the two games. That's the two games, man. You, you can't give LSU six points at home. Right now, because they still control their own destiny, man. They, they still control their own destiny. They're not out of anything yet. They're not out of nothing. They are not out of the SEC picture yet. Now, they lose to Auburn, it's over. No doubt about it. You lose to the Auburn Tigers, A, B, C, you later. That's the end of that. But, man, this is a very, 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 very winnable game for the LSU Tigers. And LSU, they can string some up. You know, after uh, after losing to Florida last year, LSU had them back-to-back -back wins at Texas A&M in the bowl game against Louisville. You know, Ed Ogeron, he doesn't lose two games in a row, but he doesn't win a lot in a row either. But this is a very winnable game. I just don't see why LSU would come out flat. I don't see any reason that LSU would throw the towel in. Could a two-loss team that wins the SEC championship, will they deny that team entry into the Final Four? Would LSU be denied entry into the Final Four if they ran the table, won the SEC championship game, but finished with two losses, a 37-7 loss on the road against a not-so-good Mississippi State team, and a home loss as a 20-point favorite to the Troy Trojans from the Sun Belt Conference? Wow. Wow. I don't think we're going to see this dilemma, but you never know, Cap. You never know. All right, that is going to wrap it up for the first hour of uh, Pelican Sports Radio, sponsored by Pelican Sports TV, but we still have another full hour still to come. I got all sorts of stuff to talk about, including the New Orleans Saints-Detroit Lions game. Got a lot of other things that uh, we need to discuss, so don't touch that dial, Cap. You're listening to Pelican Sports Radio, sponsored by Pelican Sports TV. My name is Dave, the Beat Man, Scaliato, 9, 10 a.m., WUBR, CBS Sports Radio, Baton Rouge.
All right? One hour down, one hour to go. All right? It is pretty long. I have to, I will admit, I listened to it, and it, it's, it's, it's long. I mean, I mean, you no, 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 no. I mean, the only thing it didn't include is what time he takes a dump in the morning. That's about the only piece of information missing from the intro. But, uh, I mean, my God, it, it was a little lengthy. No, heck no. No, no, play it as long as possible. Nah, we all right. Everything's beautiful. Everything is beautiful. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. Jared Poche, that's the guy that normally does it on Tuesday, right? How old is he? Jonathan Poche, how old is he? Late 20s, all right, well. Huh? Gotcha, all right, well. Good for him. I'm, I'm pulling for him. It's not an easy gig, and it's not easy to get somebody to pay you to do this. You know what I mean? Right. Oh, when I when I did my first show ever, I got in the car after the show and I put on WWL and Corey Johnson and Hokey guys on are literally laughing at me. They're laughing at me because the show was pretty bad. It was, it was bad. It was a bad, it was bad. But it had a lot of potential. You could see it had potential. I just didn't know what I was doing. You know what I mean? You could see it. I mean, I was making, it was just bad. It was bad, this, that, that, and the other thing. And obviously from the first show to about the fifth show, it got a lot better. But, uh, yeah, no, I mean, believe me, that, uh, it takes time. It takes time. It takes time to figure all this stuff out. Right. Right. I got to see me. I, I can do the two hours without having any guests or anything because that's how I used to do it. I used to go literally two straight hours. We didn't even take a break. Okay. We didn't do nothing. When we were on WBYU, we'd start the show. And two hours later, we'd end it. No calls, no nothing, zero, nada, zilch. And Right, it was. All right. No, it's the meat man. Close, <laughs> close, 
Now I didn't Tommy Chrysan, it's the meat man. <laughs> Close. Chrysan, meat man. And... No. No, Tommy's not here today. This guy, it, I mean, this guy deserves a day off. I mean, between the TV and the radio and all of these appearances he makes all throughout town and bikini contests and this and that. I mean, this guy, he deserves a day off. If there's, I mean, I think we all have to agree on that. If there's one guy on this planet that deserves a day off, it's Thomas Chrysan. And that's why I'm here, Cap. I'm glad to be here. Glad to be here. Glad to have you there. I'm Dave Scaliato. I'm guest hosting today for the future Louisiana Broadcasting Hall of Famer who will be back behind the microphone tomorrow as uh, he will begin to get everybody ready for the big game on Saturday. This is a big game right here, man. This is a big game. Forget about everything that happened before this game on Saturday. This is the one that counts right here. All this other stuff, but none of it matters. None of it matters. The bottom line, none of it matters. None. Zero. Zero. The only thing that matters from here on out is LSU winning football games. You lose a game, it's over. It's over. Now, you know, a lot of people are saying, look, man, you can't beat Mississippi State. You lose 37-7. You lose at home to Troy as a 20-point favorite. Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah, I hear you. I got it. But look, who besides the Clemson Tigers have shown that they can at least hang with Alabama? That's LSU. LSU Tigers. Remember last year, Crimson Tide, they came into Baton Rouge. What was the score at the end of three quarters? Zero, zero. It was not nothing. LSU had shut out Alabama zero, zero after three quarters. Now, granted, LSU didn't have any points, which isn't a good thing. I mean, normally when you got Alabama at zero at the end of three quarters, one would think, you were probably able to put at least a stinking field goal on the board, but no, nah, no. Nah, nah. LSU wanted to lose the game 10 nothing. I had LSU plus seven. I'm never going to forget that loss. <laughs> never, never. I got losses that I just burned and buried deep inside the meat, man. It's hard to explain. It's a tough way to go through life. It really is. It's a tough way to go through life. All these bad beats. But I got a good beat last night. I got to beat the bookies behind last night. I come with the Chicago Bears and under the total. It looked like a dead under. It looked like a dead under. It looked like it had zero chance of going over the total. And all of a sudden, in the third quarter, boom, boom, boom. Touchdown, touchdown, touchdown. Like, ah! But they slowed it down at the end. Minnesota had a chance to score. Minnesota scores a touchdown late in the game. I lose both bets. But they didn't. Thank God. They settled with a field goal. They didn't make the first down. And the meat man got the money. Thank God. But I got lucky. I got lucky. I'll be the first guy to admit that game could have went either way. It could have went either way. could have went either way. The total could have went either way. I had the game posted at payafteryouwin.com. P-A-Y-A-F-T-E-R-Y-O-U-W-I-N dot C-O-M. Pay after you win dot com. It's a, kind of like a sports forum message board because I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do with pay after you win dot com. It, you know, I'm trying to figure out how much money I want to put into it. How much time and money do I want to put in? Do I want to get an investor? Do I want to find out if anybody wants to get into the tout business? I, I, I gotta figure this out. If I wanna take on a partner or multiple partners, I'm not quite sure what I wanna do yet. But I have the greatest domain name, the greatest URL in the history of sports services. Payafteryouwin.com. You don't pay me unless you win. People like that. People don't mind paying if you win. 
Nobody wants to pay for losers, but people will pay for winners. They'll pay for winners, and that's why I got the name, payafteryouwin.com. I scooped it up from Mark Lawrence. Mark Lawrence had payafteryouwin.com, and he forgot to pay the bill. And it went like 20, 30 days, he didn't pay the bill, and the name came on the market, and boom, the meat man bought it for 10 bucks. 10 bucks kept the best $10 the meat man has ever spent in his entire life. My entire life. Period under discussion. Period under discussion. I spent 10 bananas to buy the name payafteryouwin.com, a domain name that was purchased back in like 2000, 1999. I mean, it's a hot name right here. And I got it. I got it, and I put up the free play last night, the Chicago Bears plus the points, and we got the money. Don't forget, you can get a free play every day, or at least almost every day. Almost every day. I, I, you know, it, it, yeah, almost every day. I mean, some days I don't put up a free play because I'm devastated from the night before. Like last Monday when the Redskins screwed me. I didn't put up a play the next day. I mean, Washington, the way they lost to the Kansas City Chiefs and how they didn't cover the spread, I was devastated. And then I had a, a free play up there not too long ago against the Colorado Rockies. They're playing the Arizona Diamondbacks. They're losing six to nothing. Six to nothing. Next thing you know, I'm winning the game 8-7. 8-7. I got Colorado plus a run and a half. They're in the bottom of the eighth. Scores nine, eight, two outs. All I need to do is get an out. Base hit, walk. Next thing you know, two run double, home run. I lose my run line. I got Colorado plus a run and a half. This is an absolute lock. And some kind of way in the bottom of the eighth inning, the Arizona Diamondbacks score a bunch of runs with two outs. So I didn't put up a play after that day either. I ain't like that. <laughs> I didn't do it either. So now every day I don't put up a play. Every day I don't put up a play at payafteryouwin.com, but a lot of times I do. And I did have the Chicago Bears up there last night plus the points, which was a winner. LSU's going to win this game on Sunday, folks, on Saturday afternoon. The Saints play on Sunday. That's the game we're going to talk about later on in the show. Can the Saints, the Hootatters, the Bless You Boys, the Black and Gold, the Cha Chings, because they make it three in a row. And, uh, man, I tell you, I tell you, they need to make it three in a row because they're in a tough division. This Carolina Panther team, I don't still know how the Saints beat them. After watching them play the last couple of weeks, they're tough as nails. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers, you got the you got the Atlanta Falcons. I mean, the Saints have to win. I mean, this is an absolute must-win situation on Sunday with the Detroit Lions. But the LSU Tigers on Saturday, I like their chances, man. I like the revenge factor. I like the fact that Auburn never wins at LSU. I like all that. I think I think all of that is very good. I think it's good for but the whole thing, I think, I think, I think, why, why would you want to bet an Auburn Tigers team? Why would you want to bet an Auburn Tigers team that can't win at LSU? Can't win. And then last year, last year, Auburn beat LSU. LSU was favored at Auburn by three and a half. And now the spread this year is six and a half. So we got a ten point swing on the point spread. And I really don't see the difference in the two teams, to be honest with you. I don't I don't see the difference. I, I don't I don't see any difference between the LSU Tigers last year and all the Tigers last year. Now, LSU don't have Leonard Fournette. They got Darius Geis, who I thought was good, and I still think is good. He's a young kid, he's got to get his head screwed on right. Somebody's got to just say, look, man, don't worry about all that stuff. Don't worry about all that stuff, man. Just, just do your job, man. Don't, don't worry about all this social justice stuff. Don't worry about all that, man. Play football. Make some money. 
play some football, and worry about all that other nonsense down the road in life. After you got money in the bank, after you got everything set up, after you got investments and businesses and all that, don't ruin your career now before it starts. I like LSU. I like the Tigers on Saturday plus the point. That's going to be one of the games that I give out on my show. I do a pick em show here on 9, 10 a.m. WUBR, CBS Sports Radio, Baton Rouge every Friday. 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. Central Time. And that will be one of the plays that I give out on the program. I will take the LSU Tigers plus the six and a half points on Saturday at home against the Auburn Tigers. All right, I'm take a break. Got to take a commercial break here. Got to pay a few bills over at Pelican Sports TV. That's who sponsors Pelican Sports Radio. My name is Dave, the Meat Man Scandaliato. I'm guest hosting today for the future Louisiana Broadcasting Hall of Famer, Tommy Chrysan, who has a well-deserved day off. This guy's all over the place, man, judging bikini contests, teaching kids how to pitch baseball, radio, television. I mean, I, I mean this guy, he, he's the most overworked human being in America. He needed a day off, and a meat man came to the rescue, brother. Don't touch that dial, Cap. We still got 45 minutes of Pelican Sports Radio, sponsored by Pelican Sports TV, still to come. And we're doing it all right here on 9, 10 a.m. WUBR. CBS Sports Radio, Bad Rouge. I gotta see what time this baseball game starts out here. Uh, all right. No, that's good. I got plenty of time here. Plenty of time. Plenty of time. All right. Good. 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 Let's see what happens. How much time? How much? How long are we going till the? Uh, how much time I got here? I can't hear you. Yeah, I couldn't. Hear, I couldn't hear you. How much time? How much time we got? Right, right. All right. All right. No, you sent it to the wrong phone. Yeah, you got to send it to the to the five zero four number. That's the normal. Yeah, you got to send it to the five zero four.
Alright? Yes, sir. All right. And welcome back to Pelican Sports Radio, sponsored by Pelican Sports TV. My name is Dave, the Meat Man, Scan Aliato. I'm guest hosting today for Thomas. Christ and that's right, that's right, he needed a day off, he needed a day off, he's gearing up, brother, he's gearing up for Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday for the biggest game in LSU football this year, <laughs> this is a big game, I mean, look, let's just be, look, 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 it's a big game, it's a big game. It's an elimination game. Every game that the LSU Tigers pretty much play from here on out is an elimination game. And I don't see why they can't beat the Auburn Tigers, to be brutally honest with you. I just don't I don't see why they can't beat these guys. These guys aren't unbeatable. I mean, they've looked good. They've scored a lot of points the last couple of games. They crushed the team. That crushed the LSU Tigers, the Mississippi State Bulldogs, beat LSU, the Tigers 37-7, the Auburn Tigers beat the Mississippi State Bulldogs 49-10. So I can see why LSU is catching six, six and a half points at home. I mean, it makes perfect sense. But I know better, and you know better. You don't give the Tigers six points at home when they're still in contention for everything. Period. End of discussion. I mean, they're not eliminated from the SEC race. Why would they come out flat? Why would they play with no emotion? I mean, yeah, you lost to Troy. Believe me, it was better to lose to Troy than it was to lose to Florida. I mean, if you had to pick which one of the two games you were going to lose to, Troy or Florida, the answer was Troy. Yeah, it looks bad. And it's very possible if LSU runs the table, beats Alabama, and wins the SEC championship, they might not get into the Final Four with a 37-7 road loss to a Mississippi State Bulldogs team which look good in beating LSU, but we found out that they're really not that good. After what Georgia did to them, after what Auburn did to them, we, we found out really fast that the Mississippi State Bulldogs weren't that good. And the, 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 the loss at home to the Troy Trojans is a 20-point favorite. I mean, wow. Wow, that, that, that's going to go down as two bad losses, especially the Mississippi State loss. Because once again, I, you know, I've told everybody, you know, look, I mean, you know, you lose to Mississippi State, but then they go out there, they beat Georgia, they beat Auburn. That loss isn't going to look so bad when you get to the end of the year. But, man, I can tell you, that loss looks real bad right now. And the committee's going to take that into consideration. Auburn has lost, at minimum, five straight games at LSU. At minimum. At minimum, they've lost five straight. Minimum, they've lost five straight. And, and LSU, I, I don't, I don't, I just don't, I don't see, I mean, their last five games against Auburn, 30 points, 31 points, these are the home games. These are the last five LSU Home games against Auburn. 30, 31, 45, 35, and 45. 30, 31, 45, 35, and 45. 
45 and 35 is 80. Plus 45 is 125. Plus 61 is 186. Divided by 5, that's 37.2 points a game. LSU, the last five times they played the Auburn Tigers in Baton Rouge, they're averaging 37.2 points a game. Auburn's defense doesn't even show up when they play in Tiger Stadium. What would make anybody think this is going to be any different? Man, I hope the game goes to seven. I hope it goes to seven. I hope at some time during the course of the week, I'm in a sports book. I'm on one of my apps, one of my sports book apps. You can bet over the phone here in Las Vegas. I just made some bets. I just made some bets on my William Hill app. William Hill. I just made a few bets on the William Hill app on the game that's getting ready to start between the Chicago Cubs and the Washington Nationals. I love it out here in Las Vegas, Cap. I mean, you want to make a bet, you can pull your phone out. And if you got one of the sports book apps out here in Las Vegas, you make a bet right there. After the game, you go right to the casino, pick your money up. If the game loses, you go right to the casino and make a redeposit. It's great. It's great, man. I ain't going to lie to you, man. That's the one reason I live out here in Las Vegas. Even though New Jersey... They're going to the Supreme Court. New Jersey has their date with the Supreme Court. They're going to try to legalize gambling in this country, sports gambling. I think it's going to happen. I think it's going to happen sooner than later. They see the money that these states are making with the marijuana. They know everybody's betting on sports, whether it's fantasy football, pools, where you pick the square and you pay the money in the ballroom, and they pay at the end of each quarter. Those little white parlay cards that you get at the bowling alley. People are gambling online. I mean, look, man, I mean, the bottom line is people bet on sports. Why not take advantage of it? Why not make it legal? Why not make it legal? Why not make it legal and make money off of it? Period. End of discussion. Boy, it would make my life easy, man. Man, I tell you, it would make my life a lot easier. If you could get down in all 50 states, business would be great. I can tell you right now, the meat man would be doing all right in life. You know, a lot of people don't bet because they're scared. Because it's against the law. The only place you can legally bet sports in the United States of America is Nevada, and Delaware. And in Delaware, you cannot make a straight bet. It has to be a three-team parlay. It's either a three-team parlay or a three- or more-team parlay. You cannot make a straight bet. Out here in Las Vegas, you can bet the first half, the second half, the money line, the side, the total. There's all sorts of ways you can get down here in Vegas. But in Delaware... It's a three-team parlay. That's the only way you can get down. But I think it's all going to change, man. I would have to say I turned 48 years old this month. I'm going to say by the time that I'm 50 years old, we're going to have at least 10 states where you can bet sports in. 10 states. 10 states. I mean, look, we just got the hockey team. Out here in Las Vegas, the Golden Knights. You got to walk through a casino where you can bet on the game to get to the T-Mobile Arena. The cat's out the bag, Cap. Bottom line, bottom line. Once they put that hockey team out here in Las Vegas, the NHL pretty much said, hey, man, bet away. Bet away. Bet away. Bye, right, we got to take another commercial break. Got to take another commercial break, and when we come back, I'm not sure what we're going to do, man. There's a lot of stuff to talk about in the last 30 minutes of the program here. 
Because Adrian Peterson, he's no longer a saint. The uh, hoot adders, the bless you boys, the black and gold of the chings sent him on his way to the Arizona Cardinals. We got a whopping six round draft pick for this guy. Wow. Wow, I'm glad he's gone. I'm glad he's gone. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about President Trump telling the NFL players to stand. Jerry Jones, the vice president, Mike Pence leaving the Indianapolis Colts San Francisco game on Tuesday. Talk a little more LSU football. I mean, we got a lot of things that uh, we need to discuss. So don't touch that dial. Cap, you're listening to Pelican Sports Radio. Sponsored by Pelican Sports TV. And we're doing it all right here on 910 AM WUBR. CBS Sports Radio, Baton Rouge. Barry Bobier said he, he signed up with the pest control company. He said he signed up with him. He signed a contract with him to do the pest control. So that was good. It does help. Because advertising is tough, man. It's a tough racket. Right. Right. I, I'm a terrible sales guy myself, man. I I just I I don't like it. It's tough. You were selling radio advertising? And you'd have, you had to cold call a lot of people and stuff like that? Wow. Right, we have X amount of listeners, and you, you show them the, the coverage map and all of that stuff, and this and that, that and the other thing, and yeah, ain't nobody knows what, what the truth is about all that. Man, ain't, ain't no, nobody has any clue. No clue. All these ratings and all that. I mean, nobody's ever asked me what the fuck I watch on TV. How, how do you know what I watch? You know? You know, the, these ratings and all that. They had this many people watching and this. I don't believe none of that. You know, I just don't believe it. I don't, I don't believe... Right. Pretty much. Pretty much. Pretty much. Pretty much. Everybody was like a deer in the headlights on Saturday night listening to the post-game show because they won. Everybody was expecting them to lose. They wound up winning the game. Nobody knew what to do. Nobody knew what to do. Everybody was lost.
it's tough to go to Florida and win, man. Not a lot of people go to the swamp and come away with a victory. I mean, there's not a lot of teams that do it. It doesn't matter how you do it. The other team miss an extra point. Doesn't matter. All right. And uh, welcome back to Pelican Sports Radio, sponsored by Pelican Sports TV. My name's the Beat Man, Dave Scandaliano. I'm guest hosting today for the future Louisiana Broadcasting Hall of Famer, Thomas Chrysan. TK will be back behind the microphone on Wednesday as he gets us all ready, brother, all ready for a monster weekend of uh, pro and college football. It looked like the season was dead. It looked like the season was dead, but it's come back to life. You got the Tulane Green Wave. They're a 14-point favorite on the road this week against the Florida International Panthers. Wow. Wow, the Green Wave laying 14 on the road. Wow. Wow, Tulane uh, looking to become bowl eligible for just the second time since I moved out to Las Vegas. Wow. Wow, they still got to win. Still got to win three more games now. So, I mean, they still got a long way to go. But uh, when you're a 14-point favorite on the road and the line opened 11, the Sharps and the Wise Guys came in and just pounded the green wave from 11 and a half to 14. Wow. Wow. LSU, everybody had written them off. Everybody said they were dead. They were done. They lost to Troy. Didn't look that good against Syracuse. Got crushed against Mississippi State. The coffin was out. The guy with the nails and the hammer was here. And the LSU Tigers, they were going to crawl in there after the beating against the Florida Gators, and the season was going to be over. But something happened on the way to the swamp. The Tigers decided they were going to play. They were going to play. And I think it had a lot to do with that game last year. That was a tough loss for LSU. At home, the game being switched because of the hurricane. LSU should have won that game. That left a bad taste in everybody's mouth. And LSU played like it for three quarters on Saturday. Yeah, they let Florida the Gators back in the game with the two touchdowns. But hey, you got to make both extra points. You know, you don't look. They, 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 you don't look. It's not a free point. You got to earn it. You got to earn it. And the guy from Florida, he didn't earn it for his team. And the bottom line is LSU wins. And with that win, they actually now control their own destiny to the SEC championship game. And hey, why not, man? Why not? Why not? They can beat the Auburn Tigers. Auburn hasn't won in Baton Rouge in at least 10 years, at least a decade. At least 10 years. LSU was a three and a half point favorite last year at Auburn. Now the Auburn Tigers are six and a half. At LSU, that's a 10 point swing. There's no difference in these two teams. They're pretty much the same two teams that they were last year. I don't know, man. I don't know. And then we got the Saints, the Hoot Adders, the Bless You Boys, the Black and Gold, the Chings. They started out 0 and 2, looked awful, but they won two straight against a decent Carolina Panthers team which only has one loss on the season after the New Orleans Saints. Then they go on the road to London, and they beat the Miami Dolphins. Shut them out. Shut them out. I like that. Now the Saints have an absolute monster game at home on Sunday. Game 257-258. The Detroit Lions at the New Orleans Saints. 
Right now at Bookmaker, Chris, where the line originates. The New Orleans Saints are what looks to be about a four-point favorite. A lot of plays have it four and a half, but Bookmaker, they're holding steady at four. They got the total at 51. The game opened to Wallen Saints minus three and 51. So, Chris, Costa Rica International Sports, where the line originates, they moved to spread a full point. Some other places have moved it a point and a half. Remember last year when these two teams played? Remember last year when they played? Detroit beat the New Orleans Saints 28-13. to 28-13. to 13. It's the third straight year that the Detroit Lions have beaten the New Orleans Saints. Back on October 19th, 2014, Detroit at home beat the Saints 24 to 23. Then on December 21st, 2015, the Lions come into the Superdome and they beat New Orleans 35 to 27. And then last year, Detroit, they come into the Mercedes Benz Superdome. And they beat the New Orleans Saints 28 to 13. I think that was the only game all year that the Detroit Lions never trailed in. Detroit had trailed in just about every game they had played last year, except when they came in a Superdome and went coast to coast against New Orleans. Detroit's one of these Dr. Jekyll. And Mr. Hyde teams, they lose last week to the Carolina Panthers, 27-24. They win the week before, 14-7. At the Minnesota Vikings, they lose the week before that, 30-26. to Against the Atlanta Falcons, they win the week before that. At the New York Giants, 24-10. And they won their season opener against the Arizona Cardinals, 35-23. to The Detroit Lions, after winning two straight to open the season, they've dropped two out of their last three. You know, which Saints defense is going to show up? The defense that gave up 13 points to the Carolina Panthers and no points to the Miami Dolphins? Or the defense that gave up 36 points to the New England Patriots and 29 points to the Minnesota Vikings? What, what Saints team is going to show up? What New Orleans defense is going to show up? The one that gave up 65 points the first two games of the season? Or the defense that's given up 13 points the last two games of the season. I don't like the line movement. Obviously, goes from three to four. A lot of people have four and a half. Uh, so I don't particularly like that. I'm not, I'm not ready to make a pick on this game as of yet. That's why you got to tune in on Friday from 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. I do a show here on 9, 10 a.m. WUBR CBS Sports Radio. Call Sports Live. And uh, what we do is uh, from 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. Central Time, we pick football games against the spread. Pick the games against the spread. It's either feast or famine here, Cap, because it's been tough. I go 5-0 and in the preseason. First week of the college, I go 3-1. and Then I have a 2-5 and and a 2-3. and Then a 5-0 and and a... Uh, Four and two, and then an old four and one. I mean, we're all over the place, so I'm expecting to have a big week this week. Hey, I lost some tough ones last week. I ain't going to lie to you, man. It, it was tough. 
It was tough. I knew a lot of people would count on me. I let them down. I let them down. I need, I need you to give me another chance. Give me another chance, man. I got some games going this weekend that I literally love more than life itself. And you can love them with me absolutely free. 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. Friday, Central Time, 9, 10 a.m. W, UBR, CBS, Sports Radio, Baton Rouge, Sports Line Radio with the Meat Man, Dave Scanlato, live from Las Vegas, Nevada. Don't forget, we record the show. We put it up on YouTube. I put it up on my Facebook page. You want to be Facebook friends with the Meat Man? Dave Scandaliato, D-A-V-E-S-C-A-N-D-A-L-I-A-T-O. Dave Scandaliato, send me a friend request. And I put a lot of good information up on Facebook. Check it out, Cap. Oh, we've got to take one more break. One more commercial break. When we come back, we'll have about six, seven minutes left for today's program. I'll give you my final thoughts on everything going down in the world of sports. Don't touch that dial, Cap. You're listening to Pelican Sports Radio, sponsored by Pelican Sports TV. My name is Dave, the Meat Man Scandaliano. I'm guest hosting today for the future Louisiana Broadcasting Hall of Famer, Tommy Chrysan. And we're doing it all right here on 910 AM WUBR. CBS Sports Radio, Baton Rouge. What happened was, was uh, I was a guest on Buddy Delaberto's show, and a friend of mine called me up, and he said this John Fine guy was looking for a a sports handicapper. So I called Fine up, and he explained to me how it worked. So I got MVP Sportsbook to sponsor his program and give him $200 a week, $800 a month, and a couple of times a week, I would go on John's program and do the gambling segment. Well, one day, I mean, I'm in there and it dawns on me. He sucks. Not that I don't like the guy. I mean, I like the guy, but I can take this same money, go buy my own airtime, do my own program, and forget about him. Fuck him. So that's what I did. And I mean, once again, it wasn't nothing personal or nothing like that. But why why pay advertising on somebody's show when I could pay just a few more dollars and just do my own show? And the whole show just revolved around MVP Sportsbook. And uh, it was great, man. It was great. I made all sorts of money. It was, it was good. And then, what was that? Uh, w, WBYU, Bayou, 1450. Now, I was in New Orleans, 201 St. Charles Avenue. I used to broadcast live from the Bank One building at 201 St. Charles Avenue. Man, I'm broadcasting live from the Bank of America building. Boy, it was big, man. I made this thing serious. It was like larger than life because... They didn't have any sports shows in, in New Orleans. You know, you got Buddy D and that was it. So I was this new thing, and I'm talking about gambling and the point spreads and sending your money to Costa Rica to bet on sports and people like, Jesus Christ, what's this guy doing? And it just, it took off. It, it just took off. And then this and that, and then they stole the station to Walt Disney, and, you know, they changed it to Disney Radio, and... The, the, it was, a, they changed it from light rock. Go ahead. Yes. All right. And welcome.
Welcome back to Pelican Sports Radio, sponsored by Pelican Sports TV, the final five, six minutes of the program here. My name is Dave, the Meat Man Scandaliato. I'm guest hosting today for the future Louisiana Broadcasting Hall of Famer, Tommy Chrysan. He will be back behind the microphone tomorrow on Wednesday as we get ready for a monster weekend of uh, football here in uh, Louisiana. I mean, look, it doesn't get any bigger for LSU. Must win game against a team that hasn't won in Tiger Stadium in over a decade. Might be longer than that. LSU plays their best football every other year when the Auburn Tigers come to Tiger Stadium to Death Valley. Let's see if the LSU Tigers can pull it off. Like I said, the Tulane Green Wave, they're a 14-point favorite on the road against Florida International, the Panthers. Tulane's got three wins now. They're looking for number four. Could the Green Wave become bowl eligible for just the second time since I moved out to Las Vegas in 2003? And the one bowl that they went to, the New Orleans Bowl, don't count. You have to leave the city that you play in in order for it to count. And you got to go to at least Shreveport to the to the to the Independence Bowl. You got to go to Texas for the Alamo Bowl. You got to go to Birmingham uh, uh, for the Birmingham Bowl and and and, and Alabama. You got to you got to go somewhere, man. You got to go to Texas. You got to go to Alabama. You just can't go to a bowl game. In the same city that you play football. So to me, it don't even count. To me, it didn't even count. I hate to say it. To me, it didn't even count. And of course, you got the New Orleans Saints who are absolutely on their deathbed. After Tampa Bay, the Buccaneers started out 1-0. The Carolina Panthers started out 2-0. The Atlanta Falcons started out 2-0. The New Orleans Saints started out 0-2. But, man, I tell you, they could turn it all around on Sunday. An absolute must-win game for the New Orleans Saints. they got to win this game. They need to win this game on Sunday like a guy in a hospital needs blood. They cannot lose at home coming off the bye week to the Detroit Lions. And it's going to be a tough game because Detroit's beating the Saints three straight times. New Orleans, they have a hard time. Against the Detroit Lions. Bottom line, three straight years, Detroit has beat New Orleans. Not three straight times. Not last year and then six years ago and 12 years ago. Three straight. Matthew Stafford has beaten Drew Brees three straight. Drew Brees has to beat him here, man. Detroit's tough. The Lions are tough. Can the Saints be tougher? Can the New Orleans Saints be tougher than the Detroit Lions on uh, Sunday in the Superdome? We're going to see. We're going to see. All right, now don't forget now. If you ever need to get in touch with the Meat Man, you can always give me a call on my personal iPhone, on my own personal toll-free number that I'm literally going to have until the day I die, one eight three three meat man one eight three three M E A T M A N. One eight three three Meat Man. That's right. You want to talk about Major League Baseball? You want to talk a little NHL hockey? You want to talk about the upcoming NBA basketball season? How about a little college basketball? How about the rest of the college football season? The NFL. You name it, I gamble on it, Cap. That's why I live out here in Las Vegas, and I'm ready to talk to you. Give me a call. Talk directly with me, the meat man, Dave Scandaliato, on my own personal iPhone, on my own personal toll-free number that I'm literally going to have till the day I die. one 833 meat man one 833 meatman one 833 meat man All right, sir, that is uh, pretty much going to wrap it up. For this edition of a Pelican Sports Radio, brought to you by Pelican Sports TV, 
My name is Dave, the Beat Man Scaliano, I guess, hosted the program today. Or Tommy Chrysan, who is uh, taking a well-deserved day off. TK's a busy man in the work world, brother. TV, radio, introducing bands at rock concerts, judging bikini contests. I mean, this guy, it never ends, brother. But he will some kind of way make room in his schedule to be back behind a microphone on Wednesday as we get ready for a monster, monster, monster weekend of a pro and college football. Don't forget, every Friday, 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. Central Time, Sports Line Radio, right here on 9, 10 a.m., WUBR, CBS Sports Radio, Baton Rouge. We pick games against the point spread. And uh, tune in, Cap. Tune in. All right, that's it, man. That's it uh, for uh, today's broadcast. I want to thank my man Don back in the studio. Everything went smooth as can be. My man TK, I want to thank him for letting me do his show so he can collect his paycheck. Really appreciate that, TK. And, of course, my man Alan, who owns Pelican Sports Radio and Pelican Sports TV, allowing me to do the program. TK will be back in the chair tomorrow. As always, my name is Dave, the Meat Man Scandaliato. Have a great night, everybody. Appreciate that very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, hope I didn't say anything too stupid. And I'll see you on Friday. I'll talk to you Friday. Thank you, Don. All right. That's going to wrap it up uh, for this edition of Pelican Sports Radio, brought to you by Pelican Sports TV. Pelican Sports Radio does a lot of LSU football stuff. Buddy Sanji comes on from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. Central Time. And Tommy Chrysan comes on from 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. Central Time. You're looking for LSU sports, brother. 9, 10 a.m. WUBR, CBS Sports Radio, Baton Rouge is where you want to be. Or, of course, uh, you can always... Uh, you can always do the Pelican Sports app. You get the Pelican Sports app. I got it right here on my iPhone. Comes right up, 9, 10 a.m., WUBR, CBS Sports Radio, Baton Rouge. And I can listen to the radio station all the time and all that stuff. Don't forget, uh, so there it is right there. You can, you can hear it. Within one day. How? Using powerful technology. That, that's what's playing right now at 9, 10 a.m. WUBR, CBS Sports Radio, Baton Rouge. So, so uh, look, I appreciate everybody who tuned in and uh, listened to the program. Don't forget, I do a show every Friday, 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. Central Time. It's called Sports Line. Well, 9, 10 a.m. WUBR, CBS Sports Radio, Baton Rouge. You can listen live at PelicanSportsTV.com, PelicanSportsTV. Dot com. And, of course, I YouTube the show. Uh, you can watch the rebroadcast on YouTube. Uh, usually goes up about eh, maybe 10 o'clock Central Time on Friday night. The best way to view the program is on my Facebook page. You want to be friends with the Meat Man on Facebook, uh, just send me a friend request, uh, Dave Scandaliato, D-A-V-E-S-C-A-N-D-A-L-I-A-T-O. So, uh Make sure you tune in on Friday, 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. for Sports Line Radio. We pick games against the spread, Cap. Try to get that no good stink in Bookie's wallet. Thanks a lot to everybody who watched today. As always, my name is Dave, the Meat Man Scandaliato. Have a great night, everybody.